Welcome to another episode of SpaceX in the News. I'm Kevin, and today we'll be taking a look at Starship's current status in Texas and Florida, as well as some Starlink headlines, the upcoming resupply mission to the International Space Station, and other future missions. Then we'll finish with today's honorable mention. While rocket production has at least appeared to slow down at both Starship sites, work being done behind the spotlight definitely has not. Maria Pointer and Lab Padre shared some images captured in Boca Chica of SpaceX facilities, and you can see workers are still moving dirt at the launch site and landing sites. Tent structures are also being erected, and rolls of steel are on site, ready to be turned into parts of Mark III. That ship's first tank bulkhead has already begun construction. Meanwhile, in Cocoa, Florida, Videos of shipping cradles for Starship are on standby to move the prototype vehicle to Roberts Road at Kennedy Space Center. You can see here a portable crane arrived at the nose cone of Mark II, where it later lifted the piece off the mount so that the header tanks could be removed prior to the upcoming trip. Starlink made quite the few headlines this week, all of which wrote about the constellation's hindrance on astronomical research. Apparently, the fears of many astronomers that such mega satellite constellations will interfere with their observations of the night sky have come to pass. Glowing streaks created by the passing satellites have come across their images. But NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstein stood up for SpaceX and Elon Musk while reassuring the public that everything will be fine. But I do want to say SpaceX is a great partner with NASA. Um, they are very responsible space actors. And some of these problems with astronomy can be mitigated very easily just by reducing the reflectivity of the satellites. And so uh, SpaceX is working with uh, the astronomers to make sure that, that they don't get in the way. And I will tell you, I know Elon Musk personally, he has no interest in blocking the access for the astronomers. In other news, it's been announced that SpaceX will be delivering a space habitat building demonstration on one of their rideshare Falcon 9 missions. NanoRack's main mission is to build space habitats out of spent upper stage tanks that are still in orbit. They tweeted that this kind of metal cutting has never been done in space before, and SpaceX COO Gwen Shotwell stated that this investment in new tech that will advance the exploration of the moon and Mars is promising. NanoRacks will be building a self-contained payload platform that will demonstrate robotic cutting of second stage representative tank materials in orbit. More specifically, however, an articulating robotic arm with a friction milling end effector will cut through the metallic materials without generating a single piece of orbital debris in the process. The mission will be allotted up to one hour to complete the cutting of three pieces representing the upper stages of various rockets, during which time photos and videos will be captured. This launch isn't planned until the fourth quarter of 2020. NASA has officially opened up media accreditation for Crew Dragon's upcoming in-flight abort test. All we really know for sure is that the application cutoff date is December 13th, so it definitely won't launch before then. But I'm still waiting for a NASA social invite to this mission. There has got to be one, and it must include a behind the scenes tour of parachute testing. Come on, NASA, let's go. Go! But SpaceX's next scheduled launch is CRS-19, a resupply mission to the International Space Station, the Falcon 9 booster that will carry this Cargo Dragon capsule into space successfully completed a static fire test this week. And in a change of events, SpaceX has decided to catch this booster on the drone ship Of Course I Still Love You. The capsule itself is a historic one, in that it is the first ever commercial orbital spacecraft to be reused. It had previously flown on CRS-4 and 11. CRS-19 is scheduled to lift off on December 4th, and we'll be covering it right here on this channel. And now it's time for today's honorable mention. Yesterday, Rocket Lab was supposed to launch the 10th mission of their Electron rocket, but had to scrub 20 minutes beforehand due to issues with the ground systems. CEO Peter Beck tweeted that the Stage 2 umbilical needs to be reset and tested, which will only set the launch back a few days. This ride-shared mission, called Running Out of Fingers, includes an ALE spacecraft that will deploy many microsats into Earth's atmosphere to simulate meteor particles. It will also be the first Electron booster to attempt a guided re-entry using onboard guidance and navigation hardware, including reaction control systems, as a step toward reusability. Ultimately, Rocket Lab wants to catch their boosters under a parachute with a helicopter and a hook. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. I hope you have a great Thanksgiving weekend, and I'll see you right back here on Wednesday for SpaceX's next live launch. Until that time, Godspeed. These SpaceX in the News episodes are made possible by the generous donations of my Patreon members. And if you'd like to see even more space-eccentric content, consider becoming a Patreon yourself. Even a dollar a month will get you access to exclusive videos not available here on YouTube. There's a link in the description. And God bless, my friend.